All right, great, welcome. What we're gonna be talking about today is the Nexus 9000 and Cisco ACI. What I wanna be able to do is give you some idea of how I think about it. I'm a very strong UCS Nexus guy, and so that's kind of my background. Uh, just FYI, currently not an employee of Cisco and Semi, VMware, or any of the partners. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Now the 9000 is pretty impressive. Okay. And we're going to try to understand some of the different components that make it the cool platform that it really is. To do so, I think it's good for us to move back a little bit in time and remember that, okay, well, in semi, in semi, that's cool. Have they done something like this before? And so most of us will go back and remember that we did do something like this with Nueva Systems. When Nueva Systems come out, very cool platform, right? A lot of cool technology involved here. And what it did for us is they came out with a couple different platforms. The first one I'm going to talk about is the 5000 series. The 5000 series, all right, combined with the 2000 fabric extenders, really gave us some cool ways to connect to our servers. And so what we could do is I could take some 5000s. I could toss out a few 5000s here. And then we could have our fabric extenders. I'm going to just keep my drawing reasonably small. All right, I'll toss another 2,000 in there, another 2,000. And uh, with that, we can do some arbitrary. I'll, I'll dangle another 5,000 over here. And let's put some servers up there. All right, I'm only going to put a couple just because it takes forever to draw. And so we'll stick a few servers there. And maybe on this last one, instead of having the external 2,000 as a box, we'll, get the, we'll use the one that's actually integrated into the chassis. And so we can have these. When we start to cable these, we had, some, we had a lot of flexibility in our cabling. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just cable these guys together very simply. And we can cable these together in a multitude of ways. So I'll connect down some of these down to the servers. You know, we could do some multi-home stuff. We could do all kinds of cool stuff, right? And then finally connect down these. Now, obviously, a simplified solution here. But it gets the idea. With the 5,000 to 5,000, it gives great connectivity down to the servers. And the way that we configure these is the kind of the way we've been used to. With this, we use the command line interface. We use the CLI. All right. And we would go config. You know, we could do a config command and start configuring. Everybody is happy. And we used Nexus OS. NXOS, CLI configuration, very familiar. Fabric extenders were awesome, gave us some cool ways to reach down to our servers, but the configuration, if I wanted to add a 2000, I'd cable it up, and then I'd have to go and do a little bit of configuration, so it would discover the 2000 and things like that. Very, very cool, all right? And so everybody got this pretty much right away. Everybody understood this. But you remember, Nueva also created something else really important, and that's going to be the UCS. Now, the UCS had a very structured deployment. We'd have two fabric interconnects. Right? And I'm only going to show the, um, the actual data paths. And uh, we go connect down to our chassis. Now, our chassis had the fabric extenders. So it still was fabric extenders with computers, just like the 5000, 2000. All right, still fabric extenders with computers. And uh, let me hop out of the way here. All right, 5000, 2000 with computers. But now it was a very structured. All right. And the way we'd go through, if we wanted to cable this, we had a very specific cabling methodology. And so I'd go through and I'd start cabling these guys, just data cables. And we kind of ended up with what looks like a spine and leaf type topology. All right. And so this was very cool. If I added a new chassis, all right, the cool thing, what happened when I added a new chassis in, is I'd just put that chassis in, I'd run a couple cables. And when I'd run the cables, we would find that it would automatically discover the chassis for us. And kind of a spine leaf look there. And so we had this. The big difference wasn't just the hardware, because fundamentally, if you look at a 5000, all right, or, you know, you, you look at a 5510 versus a, a, a 6120 or so for a 5510, a 5010 versus a 6120, from the outside, they just look a different color. A lot of similarities, obviously, between the two platforms, but the way that you thought about them, the way that you implemented them, was completely different. And so, what happened here? Well, between these two platforms, we had a big change in the way that we thought. What we did when we moved to the UCS is, okay, hey, instead of going through in our command line, we're going to start thinking about this completely different. Instead of thinking about it, we started thinking about the idea of having something called service profiles. 
Now, oh, all right. Well, now, with service profiles, what we discovered was very cool here. I could logically define what I wanted to happen, the way I wanted the service to be. I create a logical definition, and then I could apply that logical definition down onto stateless hardware. And that was a big deal. Tasteless hardware, that's nice. <laughs> All right, down onto stateless, can't spell today, hardware. Okay, big difference. And how did we configure all this? Through a GUI. Now, Graham, you still have a command line. We can go there, maybe do a little troubleshooting, that kind of thing. But this was a GUI. We went to the GUI, we configured this, and we made this run. So this was a big deal for us. As we went from this, moving from this idea of command line configuration, uh, where we could go through, we connect the 5,000 to 2,000 down to servers, have a lot of arbitrary configuration, moving over to UCS, where now this is the topology, boom, boom, boom. But we could go through, in this topology, we could deploy servers rapid. It was so amazing. It took the compute industry, all right, the server industry, which kind of commoditized, actually kind of decommoditized it, where people were willing to pay more for this incredible solution that solved a lot of their problems. So service profiles, I was able to logically define a server and apply it down to stateless hardware. I really didn't care which blade it went to, as long as it went to a blade that could go ahead and run for me. If something failed, no problem, because move that service profile. We moved from the idea of a server being tied to individual hardware and creating that definition. We separated out, we started using profiles. We wanted to logically define our scenario onto stateless hardware. Okay, enough about Nuevo. So now we move from there and say, okay, well, John, you've been talking a lot about Nuevo. What about, you know, I assume at some point you're going to talk about Insemi. Well, you're absolutely right. So let's go ahead and start take a look at Insemi. Hmm. Now with Insemi, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about a couple products. Yeah. We're going to talk about product X and product Y. All right, we'll go ahead and just give them kind of generic names for a second, and then we'll explain what I mean. So we have two products. We have product X and product Y. And with product X, what we can do there is we have switches. So we can go through, we can take switches. And with these switches, we can go ahead, we can create kind of arbitrary topologies. Okay. And then I can go ahead, I can put some fabric extenders underneath those. All right, and so we had, and I'll put another fabric extender in there. And so I can go through, and so with this first product, I'm able to simply go through and create my network, connect it together. All right, and I have a lot of flexibility in how I go ahead and I do this. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead. And so this is it. How do I configure this product? Well, the way I configure this first product is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use the NXOS. And I'm going to use the command line interface. So I'm able to go through and I'm able to configure this device. This is cool. Sounds familiar. Very, very cool. Now granted, we have some awesome 40 gig stuff going on in the background. We have some amazing hardware. All right, very, very competitive with the other products out there. And uh, when you take a look at the BiDi and all this other kind of cool stuff going on, granted, Awesome freaking hardware, fundamentally what you're used to. All right, a Nexus switch. Then there's this other product. All right, we'll look at the product Y, where now we have to have a kind of a very specific topology. All right, so I start rolling out these switches and I go ahead, I start rolling them out. I need a very specific, so I'm going to go through and uh, I'm going to roll out some switches here. And as I start to put these switches together, all right, and let me go put a couple more fabric extenders. I'm going to put a couple fabric extenders down here. Put a little bigger topology. And I'll go through and boop and connect these together. You'll notice as I start to connect these together, Okay, with really bad drawing. Now, once again, it kind of has that spine and leaf look, right? So we have a spine and leaf topology here, cost topology. 
and then we still can connect down to our fabric extenders and all that kind of good stuff, all right? So product Y, though, we have kind of, a, kind of a set topology, a very specific topology that we lay out. But what we do here, we think about it completely differently. And so with this topology, we're going to stop thinking about individually configuring devices and log in. We're going to once again, all right, be able to do profiles. We're going to do something called application network profiles. We're going to logically define the needs of our application and push it down to stateless hardware. We're going to do this through a GUI. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's like, ah, I've seen this before. Same idea. Revolutionary again. All right. And there's some amazing stuff in the way that the application network profiles are defined. Really revolutionary in the way we think about devices talking to each other. Well, that's, that, that'll be another session. But here all I want you to know is you're going to logically define this, going to apply it down to stateless hardware from a GUI. Okay, Very, very powerful, ultra fast, incredibly simple to go ahead and deploy. As you want to grow, you want to add a switch, you just cable it up, boom, it's automatically going to add into the infrastructure. You're going to have centralized management of all these through something called an APIC. But I don't want to go too much there. I just want to get to the fundamental idea. Application network profile, a logical definition created in a GUI is going to be pushed down to the actual hardware. And I say GUI, granted, there's all kinds of interfaces. There are tons of APIs you can do to do almost, al almost anything. You create your own tools to go ahead and do all this. Um, but you'll see most of them are going to be using the APIC. But you actually have a complete open API where you can write code or write scripts or whatever you like. So this is very, very cool and very powerful technology. But with our application network profiles through the GUI, we logically define the application needs and we push it down to hardware. So what products are there? Well, this first product on the left is a Nexus 9000. 9508, 9504, 128, whatever. It's, a Nex it's one of our Nexus 9000s. And it's running in NXOS mode. Now, the cool thing that I'm able to do is with ACI, I'm able to upgrade a Nexus 9000. I get ACI from Cisco. I can actually upgrade and use the exact same physical hardware. but now use it in ACI mode. So this reminds me a lot of the UCS days, all right, where people when UCS first came out, like, hey, what's going on here? Where's my command line? I want to go ahead and, you know, getting used to the GUI and the concept of service profiles was mind-blowing. Application network profiles can be similar. So it takes a little while to get used to this. But once you get this and you understand some things that this can do, in particular, in managing your virtual servers and your physical servers on whether it's Hyper-V or VMware, it's a completely different way and a much more intelligent way in some ways to uh, define application needs. Once again, these are my personal thoughts and opinions. I hope you got some good stuff out of this and I hope to go ahead and catch you again sometime in the future.